Hi, I'm Holly of Holly Soap Making. In this video, I'll be making another chopstick style swirled soap, similar to the one in my last video, except I decided to pour this one from the side of the mold just to try something new. If you'd like to see the recipe I used, you'll find it along with an alternative recipe at the end of this video where I enter them into a soap calculator. All of the other details and information will be listed in the description box below. I started by making the lye for this soap. I didn't have enough frozen distilled water to use for my entire liquid amount, so I used half frozen and half refrigerated. Since soap making does involve the use of sodium hydroxide, remember to always protect your skin and eyes during the entire soap making process, even while cleaning up. And when making the lye, be sure to work in a well ventilated area and never stand directly over the container or breathe any of the fumes. I added the sodium hydroxide about a third at a time and continued to stir until I was sure it had all dissolved. Then I moved on to weighing out the oils. I hydrated some orange and brown clays that I'll use later to make two different shades of orange. As I've mentioned before, I like to hydrate the clays just to make them easier to incorporate later without a lot of blending, but you can add them dry if you like. I wanted to counteract the yellowish color of the essential oils, so I prepared some water-soluble titanium dioxide to use for the white or cream-colored soap. You could leave this out altogether or substitute some white kale and clay instead, which will lighten the soap color a bit, but it won't make it as light as the titanium dioxide does. I blended the soap until reaching an emulsion and then divided it into three parts, 50% for the white and 25% each for the two shades of orange. 
For the light orange soap, I added 1 quarter teaspoon of the hydrated orange clay per cup of soap. For the dark orange, I used 1 half teaspoon orange clay plus 1 quarter teaspoon of the brown clay per cup of soap. To create the white or cream colored soap, I added the titanium dioxide at a rate of 1 half teaspoon per cup of soap. I like to add it to a small amount of soap first so I can really blend it in well without accelerating trace in the entire pot of soap. I really enjoyed doing the random chopstick swirl in my previous charcoal soap video and wanted to do something similar. But I thought it might be better to change it up a bit, so I poured from the side this time in three different places. I did oven process this soap just to make sure that it went through a complete gel phase so I could hopefully unmold it a bit sooner. I removed it from the oven the next morning, but the corners were still a bit soft, so I left it uncovered on the counter until the next day when I was able to unmold and cut it.
Since I was making a cold process soap, I left the top of lye set to sodium hydroxide, or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 1300 grams. My lye concentration was set to 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% distilled water. I left the super fat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 40 grams per kilogram. This recipe does contain lard, so I'll give you a lard free recipe I really like following this one. Once you have everything entered, you select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. SoapCalc will give you a really nice listing of all of your ingredients, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.